Hi everybody, uh, my name is Rohan Vadyunkel and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Pi Vision. and joining me today I have Sasha. Hi everyone, I'm Sasha Kirvanosova, I'm a pre-sales engineer with OSI Soft. Um, today we're going to be talking about Pi Vision 2020, some of its latest features, and we're also going to be going through a live demo that Sasha's going to be doing for us um, of some of these features so you guys can get some uh, first-hand experience with it and while we're doing this you'll be able to comment uh, in the section down below and actually talk with us and we'll be able to answer questions um, as they come through so we actually have a moderator that will be kind of fielding those questions we there might be a little bit yeah I can't hold up is that any better I can just try talking louder if that works. Um, so yeah, I can see you guys commenting and we'll have a moderator going through and fielding any questions that you guys have. She'll be answering some of them and ones that we think uh, wanna be addressed on, on stream. She'll field to us and then we'll be answering them on stream for you guys. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's, let's jump into it. So just to start off, I'm going to be going through uh, just kind of what Pi Vision is. Uh, for anyone that's joining that doesn't, doesn't know what it is, hasn't used it before, and is just trying to learn, um, anything like that, I just want to go over a quick overview. So Pi Vision is OSISoft's flagship data visualization tool. Um, so it enables you to gain insight into your critical operations and processes in real time. Uh, so it's a web-based tool, so it'll allow you to view your processes for your operations from wherever you are. So whether that be a laptop, a mobile device, or a tablet, all you have to do is you know pull up your uh, pull up your browser, pull up your web page, and your operational data will be in front of you in real time. Uh, so it's easy to use, uh, self-service, and scalable solution that grows with you as your organization grows. Uh, and we're constantly trying to improve the visualization experience for our customers. And this is seen firsthand by some of the features that we've included in past releases. So I'm just going to go over some of the highlights or some of the more powerful features of Pi Vision that have been included in past releases here. Um, so the first is drill and navigation. So we allow we allow users to link displays together uh, just to make a more seamless environment within Pi Vision. So you can have kind of like a base uh, display that links to a whole bunch of other displays and you can hop around within the displays as you explore the environment. Um, the next one is ad hoc trending. Uh, so ad hoc trending will allow you to dive into real-time investigation of your operations and discover uh, insights at a moment's notice. So if you see something going on, you can instantly pull up an ad hoc trend and get more information about what's going on there. And then we have uh, collections. So with collections, uh, you are able to group symbols together, and then once you have them grouped, you can apply those symbols to related assets. Uh, and this allows you to easily build out uh, very detailed displays in a very little amount of time. All right, so with that being said, I'm extremely excited to share some details on what users will see in Pi Vision 2020. Uh, so this is now officially released and on the screen here, we can see some of the uh, features that we're most excited about and we'll be talking about in this presentation slash live demo. Um, and we'll be doing more than just this, but these are the main ones that we're really going to focus on. Uh, so Pi Vision calculations, multiple time contexts, display usage monitoring, and then enhancements to the Pi Process Book migration utility to allow you guys to bring more features from Pi Process Book over into Pi Vision. So let's start off by talking about Pi Vision calculations. Um, Pi Vision calculations is very similar to data sets in Process Book. Uh, so if anyone has experience with Process Book, this will be very similar. Um, it allows you to do ad hoc calculations within a Pi Vision display. So on the screen here, we can see we have an example uh, where we have a upstream pump that currently isn't instrumented with any monitoring equipment 
or the pi tag isn't created for it. Um, pretty much we don't have any information on that pump on the screen right here. But we do notice that we do have three downstream flow control valves uh, on the screen as well, and we have data coming in for those. So we can take the sum of those three uh, downstream valves and we can actually output it onto the display using Pi Vision calculations. Um, and Sasha's gonna go more into this uh, and kind of show you guys how this works in the live demo. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna go over a quick overview. This is a really powerful tool uh, and it's something that you guys have been asking for for a long time. So we're really excited to be able to introduce it in Pi Vision 2020. And then the next thing we have here is multiple time contexts. So in PyVision 2020, we're no longer constricting users to using a single time context within a display. Uh, so we can see in this example here, we have two trends that are showing a breakdown of a building's energy usage over time. Uh, so with this new feature, we can see a detailed view of what's happening with the 24 hour trend. And then on the left side, we have a higher level overview of uh, the trend over the past month. So we can see patterns that are happening maybe over the course of time. And we know where we are in that detailed view uh, within the cycle. Um, again, this is something that you guys have been requesting for a long time and that was available in process book. And now we can uh, see it now in Pi Vision. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Sasha, who's gonna go and take us through a quick demo of both of these features. Awesome, thank you, Rohan. So while my screen loads, um, I would like to start with a very simple display. And since we're talking a lot about migration from Pi Process Book to Pi Vision, let's start from the basics. So here's a display. It's a very simple process overview. It, it is tag-based. And as a user, I'd like to start analyzing the display. And first thing, I would like to make sure that the process overall is going well. And thankfully, I have KPIs here, and the KPIs are displayed on these two trends. And I have night shift view as well as day shift view for KPIs like efficiency. And because now with Pi Vision 2020, we can have different time ranges for trends uh, on the same display we really can use this functionality and um, as a user uh, that makes it for me it becomes very very convenient to do a very simple analysis so and in terms of configuration uh, we have multiple options for you to configure time ranges we have a separate time range uh, configuration window and you can select between custom time range just just like i have here and that allows you to specify hard-coded times or relative times as well. And we also give you an option to specify duration and offset if you would like to keep the same duration uh, as your main display, and that's fine. And if you just want to introduce an offset, that's excellent. And of course, we keep the same feature with display time range, simply just like we had in previous versions of PyVision. So that's very, very powerful uh, new feature. So in addition to that, and this is something Ronan didn't, Rohan didn't mention, but I like to point out is we improved trend formatting as well. Uh, like here, you will notice that we have grid lines for the trends and you can select between having grid lines or having bands or no grid lines at all. And now we also have option to put the scale outside the plot area. So you have a little bit more space for uh, proper analysis, uh, and if you want to do ad hoc traces, you can do that as well. And another really, really great feature is now you can finally customize uh, trace names, trace labels as well. So uh, like you see here, I have the same parameters on different trends, but I named them differently just to demonstrate the capability. So that's all. Uh, what comes to trend formatting and time ranges. Another great capability that we are introducing is native calculations on PyVision side. And um, Rohan already mentioned this example where uh, we have this process overview and we have a pump and it is not instrumented with a flow meter. However, we have 
downstream flow control valves that have a flow meter measurement. So we can simply calculate as a sum what flow comes from the pump. And that's where I can use pi calculations. And we have this new tab on the left hand side that you can use to create new calculations or to look whether there's any calculations that were already created. I'm going to go ahead and cre create a new calculation and that will give me an option to give it a name, give a description and write the syntax of the calculation itself. And if you are familiar with process book data sets, that's exactly similar to process book. So I'm going to give it a name total flow. I'll keep the description the same. And here's where I need to specify the server, the data archive, where I'm going to be taking my uh, tag uh, parameters, tag values from. Or I can also use search within PyVision. If you're a PyVision user, you are familiar with this menu. So here under asset, I have a list of sources, including my data archive. And if I drill down and search for my tags, I know all my tags start with FC for control uh, valves. And that will give me a list of tags that I need. And for my calculation, I just need a sum of three. And I will select all of them and drag and drop to the uh, calculation uh, configuration area. By default, it uses a sum, but you can also type and change your calculation uh, according to the needs. The calculations use the same syntax as high performance equations. So exactly just like data sets, the calculation is initiated on the client side, in our case on PyVision, and then it's going to be executed by a PyData archive. Now, after I created the calculation, I can preview the result. It looks great. I also have advanced options to configure it. Again, very similar to what we had in Py uh, process book. I'm just going to keep it as order by default. And after I save the calculation, I am able to use it. So now uh, I have the calculation and I have available columns for the calculation that I can use. And just like with any other dynamic symbol in PyVision, I can uh, select the value and drag and drop it on the display. And then I can customize it the way I want. I can also trend it. So everything that you guys already know about PyVision, you can use it with new calculations. Um, so at this point, this is, a, uh, this is the end of the demo for calculations and multiple time ranges. So I'm going to uh, pass it back to Rohan. Cool. Thank you, Sasha. Um, I know we have a lot of questions coming in, uh, but we'll try to answer those uh, as we move through the presentation. Uh, so yeah, going on to the next latest and greatest feature. Uh, we are excited to announce collaborative displays. Uh, so now users are actually going to be able to uh, give write permissions to their displays to other users and groups within their organization. Uh, so this will just allow users to build out displays together and uh, work as a team to really build out their vision, high vision environment. Um, it's another other thing that was really requested, highly requested from you guys, the user voice. Uh, I'm really excited to have it be a part of Pi Vision 2020. Thanks. And the next we have um, Pi Vision usage reports. So there are a lot of reports that we've included. Uh, the main one that I want to focus on today in the presentation, at least, um, is the Pi Vision display usage reports. Uh, so this is going to allow you to see which displays are being used the most and which ones are being used the least. Uh, for the ones that are being used the most, you can take these displays, uh, fine tune them, enhance them, and work on work to build them out and make that experience for your users uh, even better. Uh, so you know which ones have the most traffic and which ones are getting the most uh, users through them, uh, just giving you that, that information uh, so that you know which ones to focus on. Uh, and at the same time, for the ones that aren't getting as much traffic and the ones that aren't um, being used anymore. Uh, we're giving you a means to figure out which ones, which displays those are, and then either delete them or investigate them further to figure out if they really need to be there anymore. 
um, just giving you more power and maintain, getting you more power to clean up your vision environment and maintain a clean, clean environment for your users to work in. Um, and now we're going to switch back over to Sasha, and she's going to go ahead and just do a quick demo of both of these uh, features here. All right. Thanks, Rohan. So again, first, display sharing. It's a big change compared to what we used to have in PyVision 2019, where only the owner of this display could save it with the same name. So now it's going to be different. Now as a user, let's say I have a bunch of displays that I created, and now I can share them with other groups. So I'm going to go ahead and open settings for my display. And uh, this uh, brings up this configuration window. It's going to look different depending on whether I am administrator or not. But uh, this is what is interesting. So as some of you may know, PyVision leverages AF identities to uh, grant permissions uh, to manage security. And pretty much you can link it to your active directory. And as a user, I will see a list of Py identities, AF identities, sorry, that are available. And I can share my display with other users uh, through identity. So I'm going to go ahead and select the user group here, the main users. And this is what's new. You will see this new checkbox, right? So I will allow everybody who's in this group to have right permissions to my display so they can save it with the same name. And this uh, brings up another challenge, right? Because now that you have multiple users, being able to edit display, in fact, at the same time, you have to manage conflicts. And this is another thing that we introduced as well. So whenever two users edit the display at the same time, and let's say the one user saves it and the other user uh, will be notified that the, that the display was changed and saved. So, uh, and he will be given an option uh, to either reload display with changes or save with a different name. So, as I said, he will receive a notification and PyVision checks every two minutes whether there were any changes to the display you are editing. And the one notification that you will see is this uh, low yellow uh, yellow notification and it says unable to override previous display changes saved by this active directory user please re please reload the display with those changes or save your copy as a new display and in fact the same message you will receive if you try to save it so it will just show it as a more more visible um, notification a warning and you are given this option to reload your display or save as different name. And in fact, if you want to look at the changes that the other user made while you were editing the display, you will be able to simply open the same display, same URL in a separate tab uh, and just look at the changes and assess uh, whether it makes sense to save your display uh, with a new name and maybe uh, merge the displays later. All right, that's... Uh, display sharing and display management. Now, let's talk about administrative side of things. We've heard loud, of cle loud and clear from our Pi system administrators, Pi Vision administrators, that uh, you guys need visibility into who's using Pi Vision and how many licenses are used, what dis which displays are the most popular. And that's why we introduced reports. So within PyVision administrative page, you will see a new tab called reports, and we have different types of reports for you. You will see display content information report, display usage information report. You will also uh, have capability to uh, see users who have accessed PyVision within a specific time range. You can also list all PyVision users and get count for publishers and explorers. So I'm gonna run one of them and you see that there's options to run the export directly in PyVision administrative page if you click view. And also you have option to export the report as a CSV file so you can analyze it with other tools. And for some reports, for instance, the one that uh, 
Rohan mentioned display usage information. If I view it, I can see details around total views for the display as well as unique users. And you can export exact this view, but you, you also can uh, look at details and details will generate uh, another type of report which is more detailed and actually gives you information about display and the user and how many times he viewed the display and when was the last time he accessed it. So uh, that should give you a pretty good um, information about uh, how how many displays are used and which ones are in high demand or in fact which ones you might be okay to delete. Um, and again, uh, for all of these reports, we have capability to view them, envision, export, and have a little bit more details. All right, uh, so that's all I wanted to show you uh, around uh, display, my, uh, display uh, usage and reports. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna let Rohan introduce some other features, including uh, migration itself, migration utility. Awesome. Thank you, Sasha. Um, and shout out to our moderator who's furiously answering all the questions that you guys have. Um, we do have some common ones uh, that she had pointed out to us that I just addressed, wanted to address on stream. Uh, so the first one was, does PyVision Calc support future, future data? It does support future data. Um, and then the next one was, what type of functions do Calc support? And it's gonna support um, the same uh, functions as performance equations. So just wanted to address those two questions there. Um, and yeah, so now we're gonna look at the Pi process book migration utility. So this is one of the features that we're really excited um, to announce. It's enhancements to this utility, and this is gonna allow you to bring just more features from Pi process book over into Pi Vision. Uh, just making that transition from Pi, Pi Process Book over to Vision easier for you guys. Um, so the new utility will support the migration of Pi Process Book calculation data sets. Um, so these will now be moved over into Pi Vision as Pi Vision calculations. And in addition to this, any Pi Process Book displays that have multiple time contexts uh, will now be able to move be moved over to Pi Vision as well. Um, seamlessly without any issues, no more warnings in the uh, utility anymore. Uh, everything will just be migrated over into Pi, uh, Pi Vision. Um, on top of this, we also have some uh, more changes to trend and multi-state functionality. Uh, so just the transition over from process book will be a lot clear, cleaner, a lot smoother, a lot more seamless for you guys. Um, and this is something that we really, we're really excited about and we really want uh, customers and you, you guys to use. Um, and it's really powerful and we're really excited about it. Um, and now Sasha's gonna go through and actually do a, a live demo of a migration for us um, of a process book display with uh, data sets and with multiple time contexts and it's gonna be moved over into Pi Vision. Um, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna show you kind of parts of the migration process. We'll start with Pi process book screen, of course, and I kind of try to keep the same theme. So I'm using similar display with Pi process book, process overview, multiple time ranges, data set that I highlighted here in yellow. And this is display that we would like to migrate. So I don't have anything that I don't expect cannot be migrated. And here's the utility that I'm gonna use, migrate um, Pi Process Book to Pi Vision Migration Utility. And I preloaded some of the um, already preloaded list of displays and I also run the analysis in advance because I didn't want to waste time during the live stream itself. But if you're new to the utility, so here on the left hand side, you are able to add files or whole folders with your Pi process book displays. And you can select which ones you would like to analyze. And what analysis does, it 
uh, checks which ones can be fully migrated, which can uh, which ones can be partially migrated, or maybe some of them cannot be migrated due to things like VBA or um, something else. So, anyways, it gives you a pretty good view in terms of what uh, what functionality is supported in both uh, Vision and can be fully migrated from ProcessBook. Um, so here I already run the analysis and it shows me that display could be fully migrated. And what's going to be new for uh, for you guys is this new features within Migrate Display menu. When you hit Migrate Displays that you selected this checkbox, the checkbox, uh, you can specify your PyVision server that you can migrate your displays to, and then. Uh, we now have this display access which you can configure and it has this new capability to grant wide access to uh, AF identities just like we had it in PyVision. So here I can uh, specify which users uh, will have wide access to, to the display. Uh, we also can uh, specify which PyVision folder you would like to migrate the displays to. I selected oil and gas. And also what's new is you can set this checkbox whether you would like to migrate your Py calculation data sets or not. And there are some cases where you might not want to migrate them. For instance, if you are transitioning to asset framework and analysis calculations, and maybe you already have your calculations running with analysis service, and in fact, they might be writing outputs to tag, so it's actually very efficient and it could be used in various applications, not necessarily PyVision only or PyProcessBook only. So then you might not want to migrate your calculation data sets. If you'd like to, you have the option, you can set the chat box and then hit migrate. I don't want to migrate it dur uh, during live session, but I migrated the display in advance. And this is what it looks like in PyVision. Again, uh, the diagram, trends, the calculation output, the data set output, and it migrated it as PyVision calculation, and it named the data set exactly the same way it was named uh, on the process book side. Um, so that's a pretty good, uh, and we have a lot of improvements for migration utility as well. Some of the symbols, like arc symbol, will be migrated um, much nicer and will look much better in Vision compared to the previous version. And you can also refer to release notes for a full list of the updates uh, for the PyProcess Book to PyVision migration utility. Um, so we also have a lot of features that we improve that might be important for end users if you're configuring your displays, your displays and also it could be important for uh, somebody who just uses display when he analyzes it. And by that, I mean uh, two features. First is my uh, improvement of multi-state symbol and that will affect your process book migration as well because process book uh, had more flexibility for multi-states. And uh, the second that uh, I'm gonna, the second feature I'm gonna show you is uh, ad hoc experience that we improved. So in terms of multi-state behavior, so if I go to the edit mode for my uh, sample display here, and I configure multi-states, if you used PyVision in the past, we had this only option to um, for a value symbol to multi-state with fill property, meaning it will change the color of the whole area of the object. Um, and now we are adding more features. Uh, you can multi-state the value only, or you can multi-state all text. And finally, another feature that I'm really excited about, which will improve migration as well, is ability to hide. So now you can hide the symbol at all, and in the edit mode, it will still show you the value so you can actually uh, edit it properly. But when you switch to the uh, view mode, it will hide the symbol. And here I have some examples of uh, the uh, multi-state behavior using collections. For instance, I have a collection of two compressors 
and each compressor has a number of active alarms and severity and you can compare how you now can select between, between different formatting options and finally the high behavior could be uh, applicable let's say if you want to hide the severity if there's no active alarms uh, like here I'm hiding it but if I go to the edit mode it shows me that it is uh, here so that's multi-state improvement and let's talk about ad hoc trending and uh, in fact there's two types of ad hoc trending in PyVision you can ad hoc trend for uh, any dynamic symbol if you click on the ad hoc trend or if you have a, a trend symbol just want to make it bigger it, it's called pop-up trend and you can use the same functionality for pop-up trend as well so what we're looking at is a display that shows wind speed actual measurement and also I have a wind speed forecast I have two types of forecasts one day and uh, every hour and I'm going to go ahead and look at the summary table. The summary table was available in the previous release of PyVision. What is new though is the ability to trend all the statistics like average, minimum, and maximum on your ad hoc display. So for this analysis, I, uh, I will exclude my daily forecast from the analysis. So I'll keep the hourly and the actual values. And what we can see, the forecast looks pretty busy on that time scale for five days of data. So I can actually use new improvements of ad hoc experience to make it look a little better, to kind of introduce some smoothing, to make the analysis um, more visually appealing. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to add average for the forecast to the trend. And by default, it adds the average for the whole time range. However, uh, I'm interested in smoothing the trend so I can adjust summary intervals for my trend hop trend for the summary. And I can select between different options. I can specify step um, or I can actually specify number of intervals as a count, which I'm going to use now. And when I apply it, and what I'm going to do next, I'm going to also exclude the actual value from the trend. Now I receive this very smooth forecast trend, which is an average. It allows me to quickly say whether the forecast is close enough to the actual values or not. And that's one of the use cases for using our new ad hoc experience. And I also, you, we improve formatting itself. Now you can add markers to your trends, whether it's ad hoc or if it's your regular trend on your main display, you will see that marker options on the trend formatting pane as well. And we can also switch to a scatter plot option where there's no connecting lines. So uh, that's everything that I wanted to share today during the live demo. There's a lot more, and you can refer to uh, other resources that uh, Rohan will mention a little bit later. So now, again, I'm going to um, pass it back to Rohan. Awesome. Uh, real quick, Sasha, can we go back to the, uh, can you share your screen again? Can we go back to the migrated display? Oh, sure. One thing we just wanted to point out real fast um, was that in this display there are multiple time ranges. Um, in the form of do, the night shift and day shift. So uh, the night shift is looking at the yesterday's last 12 hours night shift, and then the day shift is looking at today to current time. Um, so just wanted to point that out for everyone, uh, just to highlight that multiple time ranges can be migrated over into Pi Vision. Um, yeah. Thanks. Then I'll transition over, uh, if you stop sharing the screen, I will transition back to us. Awesome. All right, so that actually wraps up the uh, presentation for today and the live demo. Thank you, Sasha, so much for uh, doing the live demo for us. Thank you to our moderator, who's been <laughs> answering so many questions down below. Um, I could see her furiously typing away at everyone going off, uh, all the questions you guys have. 
Um, if there are any other questions that we want to address on stream, let me just look real fast. Um, yeah, feel free to ask any questions right now, and we'll try to we'll try to answer them um, as you guys come through. All right, so we have one about Pi Vision extensibility. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah. So all the uh, extensibility functionality will be available through GitHub, um, but any work outside of what's been documented isn't supported from OSIsoft. Um, so yeah, there's the answer for that guy. And so. we have questions around uh, VBA flexibility uh, and whether VBA is going to be migrated. Of course not. So VBA is an older technology, so PyVision uses newer technology, web-based, um, so you can use um, Angular um, and you, you can double check examples as uh, Rohan mentioned. Uh, so um, yeah, we don't migrate VBA code, but the migration utility itself uh, allows you to export your v VBA code as a report so you can assess it and see whether you can implement it with PyVision ex extensibility. Um, and then another one that I see here, uh, can PyVision calculations replace other calculation engines? Uh, so PyVision calcs, they're really meant for kind of ad hoc, on the fly calculations. Uh, for things that are more complicated, we would uh, recommend using asset analytics. And do, 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 I did see one mentioning on the fly calculations for uh, data archives. So right now, on the fly calculations are um, only going to be functioned, functional for Py, Py tags. Uh, the feature has not been made to include anything for AF at the moment. I see a question about point, uh, whether there's option to search by point source. Um, we don't have that option in Vision yet. I'm not sure. Do you have any idea about JavaScript libraries? I'm seeing one about if JavaScript libraries can be imported. So that would be a part of extensibility. I would imagine um, as long as you uh, as you can uh, leverage it within your um, Angular JS code, and I'll I'll have to double check which exact version of Angular we we're using with this version of PyVision. Um, if you can edit a wrapper for JavaScript, then yes, but um, that fully depends on your um, programming skills. So um, our extensibility leverages Angular JS. Uh, so are there any tools available in PyVision for creating custom process symbols? Um, so I believe this can be leveraged with PyVision ex extensibility, but there's nothing built in uh, to Vision to allow you guys to build custom symbols. Mm -hmm. There's no wizard, but again, we have GitHub examples that you can use as a starting point. And now we have a pretty detailed documentation that is also published on GitHub. Um, so I'm seeing one for the uh, demo event frames uh, within PyVision. So uh, we actually do have a webinar that we'll be doing mm -hmm. later in November. So um, that could be something that we consider putting into the, the webinar uh, at that point in time. Um, for now, I think we're going to limit uh, the demo, uh, but the webinar is probably a great resource for that. I see there's questions around SQC migration as well. So PyProcessBook used to have SQC symbol. For current version, we are not migrating it. Um, so, however, uh, to provide a solution for you, we uh, also we have a way to implement a lot of SQC logic on asset analytics side, and then you can visualize the outputs. And we also are going to publish a, a post on PySquare uh, with a lot of details and best practices around how you can do that. Um, and also. We do have workshops that our 
services team uh, hosts to help you uh, go through this process as well. So one last question we're going to address here um, is that you can't overlay multiple time ranges within a single graph. So it's just multiple time ranges um, in the display. So you can have different trends all with different time ranges, but they can't be within the same same display or the same trend, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to cut it off there. Uh, I know there's a lot more questions, uh, but just due to time and uh, everything else, we're going to we're gonna cut it off, but we do have a lot of other resources for you guys. If you check the description uh, down below, you will see links to other videos, kind of detailing some of the stuff we talked about today, and live library links, and also uh, online courses for Pi, Pi Vision. So if you're new to Vision, you wanna learn more about it, particularly something like extensibility or the Pi Process Book Migration Utility. Uh, there's great resources uh, that we have available for you guys down there. Um, other than that, we really want to thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and we hope you guys got a lot out of it. Uh, thanks from, from myself, uh, and then Sasha as well, and then OSI Soft, we all thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>